Hey guys, I uh, want to do one more video this evening there real quick and this is to address a couple questions that I got that to me seem to be uh, good fodder for a video and these are two different emails with some questions that I can address with one video and basically it's about overtraining uh, what is an acceptable frequency of training like uh, you know how many times a week should you train each body part or what can you get away with and length length of individual sessions what do I think about that okay first of all uh, one fellow um, he asked me now he's what he said seemed kind of uh, seems kind of backwards to me from I mean you know what he's heard what he told me he has heard it seems a little backwards to me from what I would think he said that he has heard that natties need to train two times a week whereas People on gear uh, can train one time a week. I don't get that because to make it very simplified, and then I will get into it a little bit further, just in case you're, you know you're not really on board with me, or what I believe is simplified isn't really made much clearer in the way that I phrase it. But the more training you can get in and recover. From the better your gains and, and the more the, the more quickly you will see results. So does that mean it's better to run out and try to train, you know, two times a day like some kind of double split routine or some kind of split routine where you uh, are training, you know, almost every day or some kind of you know just too much volume like that training wise? How much how, how often you're working out and that's going to be the best for you to you know make gains no it's not if you can't recover okay so pretty much what everybody thinks about is overtraining in terms of overtraining is the inability for you to recover uh, sufficiently between your workouts uh, for your central nervous system to recover and for you know everything else to be able to uh, to do what it has to do to be ready to get up and go again by the time you rotate back around to that body part, you know, ideally. Uh, and that is going to be limited by your nutrition. So pretty much an inability to recover, uh, or what you want to think of as overtraining, is going to be um, caused by a, a diet that is insufficient to support what you're trying to do as far as volume, intensity, duration, frequency, all these things. So if the diet's on point and you can get the food in, literally this is, the, this is what distinguishes success from failure with this kind of approach when you're considering this, these issues. If the diet is there to support it, you can train more frequently and you can train harder. But my belief is you don't want to train longer. So when I get in the gym even, I go in the gym and my diet is you know, basically uncompromised. And of course, I'm not natural. Um, when I get in the gym, I like to keep my workouts down generally to 45 minutes if I can get away with it per body part. Now, occasionally I will run into an hour. Because lately, I've stepped up the diet and I've been uh, you know, playing with the diet. And so I'm adding in a lot of extra shoulder work and some extra things, calf work, extra calf work, almost uh, every workout or so. I'm really adding a lot of shit. Now, I usually, myself, I work out probably, let's see, I work out usually Friday night. I work out... Uh, Saturday or Sunday, once in a while both, and then I may take off um, like Monday and Tuesday and come back Wednesday, take off Thursday and then start again. So that's pretty much what I do and for me I consider that a heavy load. I consider that to be a lot of work and the longest I'll be in that gym is hour. Probably should close that door with all these little gnats flying in this fucker. The longest I'll be in there is an hour. And of course, you know, I've got my, uh, my water on hand. Sometimes, to tell you the truth, what I've been doing lately, 
I may even drink one of those entire uh, V8s during my workout. Big bottle of V8, the ones that are 75% real juice and 25% filtered water, like the green ones, the green vegetable one. I'll drink that. Sometimes I drink that through my workout and then drink water on top of that. And I like that. Uh, it, it abs actually, I feel like I feel, I don't know, like I don't tire as easily. And that's probably from whatever sugar's in there, you know, on top of the sugars I already ingest, the simple sugars, the, uh, the uh, dextrose that I ingest prior to my workout and sip on when I first get to the gym. But I would say a natural guy, um, to a large degree, it's the same deal, okay? Now, if you're enhanced, you're going to be able to uh, synthesize your food and nutrients more quickly, more thoroughly. You'll get more, you wring more nutrition out of everything that you eat. And, you know, it's going to help with recovery and all that too. But the real deal is, it mostly, most of that that you attribute, it, you attribute to recovery, that you consider to be recovery, which is recovery, most of it, not all of it, but most of it comes about um, through an enhanced ability to be able to process nutrients. To be able to process nutrients. So uh, again, enhanced, natural, however you want to slice it and dice it, the number one aspect that's going to uh, separate success and failure is going to be your nutrition. Regardless of what any of the busters want to believe, it comes down to nutrition. That's you know, can you make gains and progress, you know, with, with less than stellar nutrition? Sure you can, but you'll top out somewhere and you're not going to make anywhere near the progress and advancements you could make if you had had that nutrition on fucking point. And that's for sure. So, the natty guy, if you're doing pretty good with the nutrition, I would say, I don't know that I would train everybody part twice a week. I think I would train everybody part once a week and see how that worked for me. And if I felt like really strong and well recovered, energetic, wasn't tired, didn't feel beat up from it all week long or whatever, if I felt really good, and you should, you know, theoretically, if if everything is working the way it's supposed to work, other places, you know, the diet, the water, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the rest, if you are doing twice a week, you know, each body part twice a week right now, and you're a natural guy, if you cut that back to each body part once a week, you should feel the difference. You should feel more energized, vitalized, should feel better. If you don't, if you can't tell a difference, like you, maybe you'll have excess energy or whatever, but if you can't feel a difference, and then that, that probably says that the nutrition isn't what it needs to be. You will feel a difference. Now, if you cut back to you know, each body part once a week, and you feel like you have an excess of energy, and man, you're really just itching to go again, and you really feel that. It's not just psychological. Then go ahead and step it up. But you don't have to jump over to twice a week. You just change up your rotation so that you end up maybe instead of seven days, you do each body part twice. Maybe every eight days or nine days, you do each body part twice. Right? So you're not limited by a calendar week. And the best thing to do, since it's an individual thing, is just experiment because there's so many variables, just experiment and see what works best for you. But my feeling is less is more. Less is more because you don't want to get to the point where you're going beyond what your diet can support. That's what it all comes down to. So I would, I would get in there. You want the intensity high, bang through the workout. This is after you've done you know your basic compound exercise, right? Take your time through that one a little bit. Uh, your rep range is going to be a little different, a little bit lower reps with that one, heavier weights with that one. And that's the only time you're going to be fresh is that first exercise. Now, after you've given it hell with whatever that is, and that's probably going to be with a barbell, you know, some kind of compound-oriented thing with which you can handle the most weight for whatever body part you're working, chest, it's probably flat bench. Uh, you know, legs, it's probably squats. Um, back, it's probably deadlifts, Right? Okay, on those days, once you've done that first exercise, okay, now step it up, really step it up, and bust ass through there. You want to sweat, and you want to pump, and you want to chase that pump, and just explore the angles. 
stimulate the muscle from every angle you can possibly find and just the, the goal is to try and thoroughly you know, beat it up pretty good as quickly as you can and get the hell out of there because you don't grow in the gym. No one has ever grown an ounce of muscle in the gym. You grow afterwards. You grow when you sleep. You grow as you rest. You grow, you know, you can grow all the time afterwards, you know, a little bit by little bit, as long as the diet's there to support it. So you don't grow in the gym. You grow afterwards when you go home and, you know, you do the damage in the gym, you tear it down in the gym. Then when you heal, because the nutrition is on point, that's when you grow and make gains. All right? So I guess that's about as easy as I can probably put it. I don't know if it makes sense. It's getting late for me, and I begin to, uh, my IQ drops, you know, a few points every hour after uh, 7.30 p.m. generally. So I'm well past that now, I think. Anyway, you guys have an awesome night. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow morning is going to be the back video that I've been talking about so long. Um, build it up, and you guys might look at it and say, fuck, this ain't shit. But no, you, it'll be cool. I got something in store for you. All right, guys, I'll uh, catch you tomorrow. Have an awesome night's rest, and uh, don't train beyond what your diet's there to support. Simple as that. Get the nutrition up if you want to train harder.